Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Planning and Zoning Board meeting. I'd like you to all please rise and press the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act has been given by the Secretary in the following manner, posted on the bulletin board in the Borough Clerk's Office, emails in the retrospect, and the carrier post. Ms. Pinto, will you have roll call, please? Uh, Chair Lehammer? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Here. Mr. Here. Fusion? Here. Mr. Pachowski? Here. Mr. Alperley? Here. Mr. Vanella? Here. Mary Capavis? Here. Uh, Mr. Ranieri? Here. Mr. Stern? Here. Uh, Mr. Rowan? Here. Mr. Pettit? Here. And Mr. Knight? Here. Great, thank you. Uh, before we get into the business of the meeting, I would ask Solicitor Rowan to please swear our new members. Yes, uh, Madam Chairman, we have two members. Um, Fred uh, Bernie, is it? Yes, sir. And he's going to be a class three member taking over for uh, Chief Daly. And we're uh, swearing in and welcoming tonight to, uh, Dan White, who is going to be the second alternative. So, gentlemen, if you would stand, and we, I'm going to, you're going to say aye in your name, and then you'll just repeat after me. Aye. Aye. Take it away. Okay. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> the con sure. Constitution <laughs> and laws of the state of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will perform all the duties of the office of member of the office of member of the planning zoning board, borough of Runnymede, to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Okay. The next order of business. Uh, will be a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, August 9th meeting. I do have one addendum to the minutes. Um, Mr. Bach was uh, stated to appear here um, regarding the uh, redevelopment. He will not be here this evening. Uh, he has a, another engagement, so he is excused. Are there any other questions or comments on the, meet, on the minutes? Motion to approve. <coughs> All right, Mr. Ockley and Mr. Dickinson, all in favor? Aye. <coughs> Okay. Do we have any old business need to go over? All right. Um, there were some people that I'm sure were notified of an application. We are not going to be hearing tonight. I just want to put that out there first in case there, if there's anyone here um, regarding the use variance for Mr. For Mr. Carapalo, uh, that will not be heard this evening. Um, and they, you will be re-noticed um, once they decide what the use is that they are going to be um, pursuing. So um, if you have any, any reason to be here for this particular application, it will not be heard tonight. Okay. I ask the public, Madam Chairwoman, anybody here on the Garofalo application? Um, if I may approach real quick. Of course, sure. Um, I, I got your uh, message that it was going to be carried. I wanted to be here just in case the public did come and we could talk to them. Uh, we got Mr. Pettit's letter. I talked to Mr. Garofolo. We're going to address several of the comments. We're going to try to get a little clearer issue of what's going to be there. But it is going to be a variety slash thrift store is what he, Mr. Garofolo decided on. I know the issue is parking um, and uh, some other issues that Mr. Pettit raised. We'll address them and come back next meeting. I ask that you not make us re-advertise because we're carrying it from tonight's meeting. If we Go past October, it's okay if we re advertise for November. But since we advertise today and no one's here, I, I don't, I would ask to save some money for my client, not to re advertise again. Well, we, Mr. Rowan, um, we had talked about that. What, what is, I mean, uh, because we don't I, have a use. Initially, I think Mike, the application was for um, either or. Right. And that's how I think it was, was put in the, uh, the uh, newspaper. Uh, newspaper. I think. If he republishes in the newspaper exactly what he's going for, I think it's a thrift store now, Mike. That's correct. Uh, yeah, I'll re notice to everybody else. I don't know if we, I think we could waive that. If the board wishes to do that, I mean, if it's the board opinion that he should notice everybody within 200 feet, 
you know, fine. But it, at a very minimum, I would suggest that he republish to clarify that the use variance is for a particular, the particular Where the use is going to be, of, right. Of a third story. <laughs> right. And we, we'll do that. We'll be notifying you. I don't think he needs to know that. Oh, 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 because he already told yeah. thrift or Chinese, so I think yeah. you know. Right, so there, so there, he gave two so he clarifies to the, for the public. But you think the newspaper at least to make sure it's clear? Yes, yeah. yeah. I would, at a minimal, I think, yeah. yeah. The newspaper goes out to everybody else. That's right. the whole idea. Get the 200 feet people, and then give everybody else those who's Right. That's fine. And, and the 200, with it, they get that too. I mean, yeah. they read the same Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. You're welcome, thank you. <laughs> You want to okay, we have an application for a bulk variance for Mr. Uh, Blomke, is that yes. correct? Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Blomke, would you raise your right hand? You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give this board tonight is truthful and accurate to the best of your knowledge? I did. Okay, okay just uh, please tell the board what your, what your intent is and if you have any uh, exhibits. Uh, that the board has not already gotten, now's the time to present them. Uh, what I intend to do is on the back of my house, I'd like to build a uh, 12 by 14 foot deck. Uh, I'd like to have a roof put on it, and uh, it's screened in. It's for health reasons for my wife. Uh, she had a liver transplant a number of years ago, and her health is starting to decline a little bit, and we're scared that some of the mosquito stuff and the different things that are going around uh, makes it very difficult for her to hang outside, enjoy outside, and so just make it a little easier for her. I've given all the uh, papers to uh, Joyce, and, and you have everything I have. Uh, the newest thing was from the letter from the engineers. Uh, they had requested what the um, back distance was, and I wrote with and without the deck, as well as the percentage that the house takes of the land, as well as with the deck. Gene, I just had one question when I reviewed this. I, I don't know if John picked it up, but this was a, this survey that you have that shows where the new deck is going in. That's correct, sir. And right now, your existing home is 4.3 feet from the property line. Correct. Now you're asking for a variance so that, that it's 4.21. Two one. Yeah, that's from the fence. I think that's from the oh, from the fence. Oh, okay. So 4.21. Yes, sir. But you're asking for a Four point uh, a setback of, to permit you to come within four point two feet with the new the new deck. Uh, what I what I, I figured is is if I just ask for what the house where the house is now in relationship to the um, property line. But I my intentions are is to go just a half a foot in uh, in the house on the two I sides. I saw so that. Yeah, it looked, it looked like it was it. But are you going to have a roof on there where it's going to be an overhang? It's going to be an a frame. Okay, so is that, that overhang, the, the edge of the roof, is, is not going to exceed your prop, your building line right where your building is now, is that correct? That's correct, sir. I don't, I don't think the edge of the roof is what the defining factor is. I think it's the structure itself. Okay. As far as the setback. John, I've had some where, they, where the roof has to be within the setback. But, but you're not getting just, any closer than the house itself well, right now. That's correct. Like, and then, yeah, that's the back is 4.3 feet, you're not getting any close. So the roof is, the, the end of the roof is going to be just in line with your existing building. That's correct. Okay. Well, I think that's a, a good question, though. If this, the structure is 12 feet long, and you have one foot overhang on either side, that's 14 feet. And if your current back of your house is 13 foot 4. Yeah, we would have to adjust it in. I, I didn't know, like the gentleman here said, if you go by the actual deck and the structure that's on the ground or the roof. We, we have run in that before where the, uh, actually probably by my house, where there was a lot line adjustment and the overhang because it came out too far. It was actually hanging over the other person's property. I was the part of key. Okay. I was is it, the, the, is it the foundation or is it, because you could have a cantilever, you could have the right. roof line. I just don't think that uh, you should go any wider than the back of your house. That's fine. Any part of, of the uh, keep the roof line with the yeah. existing structure. It'll be easier to build too. You put the. Well, the roof line could like approach further into the 
just right to the edge of the side of the mountain. Yeah, that's what's there. Just keep the sides of the roof right now. Imagine the roof. Okay. Just on this side, yeah. John, I read your review letter. Did you have any other comments? The only other comment I had was on the coverage. Are you less than 35%? Yes, sir. Yeah, he submitted on the 23.3 if I put the deck in. Oh. And without the deck, I think it's 19. You said 19 points second without the deck. without the deck with the deck 23.3 with a 50 foot setback in the rear. So you need oh that. yes, yes. Those were our only comments. Like just questions. Those two questions. Okay. Is there any other questions from the board on this application? At this point in time, I'd like to open up the meeting to the public. Anyone wishing to speak on this application, this application only, please come to the microphone, state your name and address, and be heard. All right, there's a motion on the floor to close the public portion. Is there a second? I second. All right, motion Mr. Dickinson, seconded by Mayor Capata. All in favor? Aye. Okay, public portion is closed. Uh, Mr. Rowan? Yes, the applicant comes before the board tonight for a, a, a boat variance to allow him to install a, a 12 by 14 foot deck on the existing building. And he has requested and he's given testimony that uh, uh, he needs a, a, a setback variance of 4.2 feet from, it looks like, the uh, easterly line of his property uh, and that the uh, uh, roof line will not exceed or go past the existing structure on point E that side. Yeah. Okay. So I think he's proven his okay. his, uh, his matter and the board should consider approving this, this uh, application. Okay, is there a motion on the floor to approve this application? I'll make a motion to second the application. Uh, Mr. Pachowski, seconded by Mr. Opperly. May I roll call, please? Mrs. Cleanhammer? Yes. 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 Mrs. Cushion? Mrs. Cushion? Yes. Mr. Pachowski? Yes. Mr. Alberti? Yes. Mr. Vanella? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. And Mr. Neary? Yes. I don't think we have that. Okay. Your application is approved. Good luck. Enjoy the outdoors. Enjoy Wait your yard. Wait a second. You don't have Mr. Laverde on your list. He wasn't, he no, wasn't in the list. Yeah, he wasn't on the list. Yeah. So now we have Mr. Laverde. Okay. Good luck. The ayes have it. Good luck. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Thank you. So when we be able to have this building permit, you're still going. You have to get your building permit next, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So you understand? You got to get the resolution. Okay, so I'll pick it up by next. When is the resolution ready, Joyce? Well, well, the resolution would be done until the next uh, the next council meeting. Next council meeting. Council meeting. Next, uh, so did we allow? We allow. I mean, you, you have some. You submitted your uh, building permit. Yes, and I, I paid for it. So it's forward. So sure. uh, I'll just forward the construction permission for you to do it that way. We'll prolong the process. So you have to wait a month. Wait a month. You don't have to. No, oh, don't have to. Okay. I'll, I'll give it to them tomorrow for review. Okay. So they'll call me. Yeah, they'll they'll review the uh, permit and. Uh, Provide you if it's approved. We'll call you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you Take care. Much. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next matter we have before us is an application of, for Mr. Sambucci and uh, Mr. M or Mrs. Marlin. It's a Minor subdivision. Yeah, so good morning, or good evening again. Good morning. Good evening again. It feels like a long day. Uh, Michael Albain on behalf of the applicants, uh, Mr. Sambucci and Mr. Marlon. Why don't you come up and have a sworn in? Yeah, gentlemen, would you please raise your right hand? You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give this board tonight is truthful and accurate to the best of your knowledge. Yes. Can I just, I'm sorry, can I just, Mr. Marlon? Name and address. Name and address. Ben Sambucci, 19 East 4th Ave. So I'm talking to Joe. Were you going to recluse? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I believe uh, oh. Joe Ockley is being represented by Mike, and just so another legal matter. Not, just so, yeah, not on this, but just so that we avoid any 
uh, incident of uh, what would be perceived to be impropriety. Mr. Uh, Offerly is going to recluse himself and uh, we're going to see uh, Mr. Stone. Take them, uh, remove the dais. And we'll, Mr. Stone. we'll see Mr. Larry, Larry Stone as the uh, first one uh, to uh, wear Joe's secret. Um, I have no objection, Mr. Stone. Oh, um, for a brief summary, Mr. Sambuki owns a lot, a pre-existing lot that's 37.5 feet. We're asking to move the lot line between Mr. Sambuki and, and Mr. Marlin uh, four feet towards Mr. Marlin's property. Why? Because Mr. Uh, Sambuki's, uh, Ken's uh, uh, driveway is partly on Mr. Marlin's property. This will make the lot a lot a little bit bigger, it's still not conforming. There's 60 foot lots out in that area. Um, a lot of, if you go down that street, a lot of them are under 60 feet. Mr. Marlin has 62 feet. He will have 58 if you allow this subdivision, but it'll, it will eliminate encroachment on his property. Um, it will be an undersized lot. We did advertise in the paper for that, gave notice to the public. So that's a bulk variance. And Mr. Sam uh, Bucci and his property will also be undersized, but it'll be a little bigger. Um, and it would help, um, you know, uh, the lot coverage and things like that. That's the gist of it. Ken, do you have any comments on that, or is that pretty much it? That's pretty much it. We've we've really shared it over the past ten years, and we've been very civil about it. But it's really the only house on the block that has a shared driveway, and just didn't make any sense. Are you going to be moving a fence or anything? Any fences need to be no, moved or anything? No, it's just that. It's just, it's just a, a paper, paper lot line change, basically. Well, you'll do new deeds, and you'll we'll do a new site plan, send it to minor site plan, send it to Mr. Pettit, then we'll do uh, new deeds with legal descriptions. It should be completed within about 90 days, because we'll get the resolution next month and start doing that. And, uh, you know, that, that's a good point that the chairman brought up. They're good friends now, they're neighbors, but when Mr. Marlin sells his house, he gets somebody right. who's not a good neighbor, right. he can't park on my lawn any, you know, my side anymore, and it becomes yeah. a problem. So, uh, it's also Mr. Marlin with a little bit of tax rate because he's lots a little smaller. Mr. Shantucci will have a little bigger lot, okay. A little more, I don't think probably 40 by 125 is what, 500 square feet, maybe $100 a year, $50. But it, it makes it a lot cleaner, a the, the lot. That's our position. Short sweet. Okay, so we're going to uh, the minor subdivision is going to be provided as a condition of this approval. Are you are you uh, comfortable bifurcating this with the um, all, all together? Yeah, I mean, or do you what want we to do? Uh, we can bifurcate if you want. To have the board vote on the subdivision, and then or really this the minimum well, you can vote on everything all at once. If you're comfortable with your time. I'm, I'm fine with. It. Okay. We can do it all. Once. Okay, so we know we're going to basically uh, be granting a variance, okay, for a subdivision for and then a variance. A subdivision and, and a variance. It's actually kind of a variance and a subdivision. <laughs> so the existing frontage of lot five is thirty-seven point five eight feet. The existing frontage of lot six is sixty point four two. Yep. Add those together, it's one hundred feet. So it's like I guess like two fifths only. Yeah. So if you give four feet to the um, other lot, you're going to have a variance of 58.42 feet for lot six. Yep. The lot five is actually getting gaining. It's gaining. So yes, it's pre-existing. So the the, the, the uh, Marlin lot will be 58.45 for two. For two. For two. And lot five point. will be 41.358. Lot five eight. Okay. Why would we round them? Is there a reason why we wouldn't get them to the foot? Is there a reason? Yeah. We can do 30, we have 37, five adding four feet, 41, five. We're fine with that. Is that okay? Once we get the subdivision plan, it'll, it'll clear up. So okay. four feet is going from lot six. 41, five, five makes more sense. If four feet's coming from one, that's out of resolution. Which out four feet from one, resolution. four feet to the other. The OA, we'll get the legal description, review those, and plus or minus. Yeah, we don't have a survey, right? We have a survey. We have his survey. We don't have Mr. Right. So exactly. When, when uh, Martin's given back four feet, you're, you're what, two, three feet from the house at best, right? 
Yeah, that's why we advertise for a bulk pair. No, I understand. Yeah, underside the bottom. Yeah. <clears throat> why, and just a question, I'm not, what, Mr. Martin, is it? Yeah. Marlon. Yeah. Marlon. Yes. How come, uh, just a question, like you have all that side lot there. Yes. Do you have off street parking yourself? Uh, currently, no. No. Okay. Just I'm curious as yeah. to why you It's always been shared. Yeah. So you use the lot that's right. I mean, you use the driveway next to it. It looks like it's been there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I've been there since 05. And right. he moved in a couple years later. I shared it with the previous owner. And then he moved in. We kind of shared it. But we've been taking it. And I just felt like it was time to see if we can move forward and yeah. just make it. But when you purchased it, you knew that it was you're encroaching on his property anyway, right? Yes. So, yes. It's a limited debt. Yeah. And, and plus, you have room on the other side of the house if you want to put a driveway in. Right, right. So, it so does have problem. a bad name of For that street, that's a lot of problems. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's agree with these round two. <laughs> <laughs> It's, 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 41. 45 is fine with us. 41.5 and then 58.5 is that what but you're then how, many, how many feet are actually coming? It's four feet. Four, feet. four feet. So whatever it is, it, we're giving four feet from right now. <laughs> are there any other comments from the professionals? Mr. Rowan, any other comments? No. no. Mr. Pettit? No. Are there any questions from the board members? Okay. Um, okay, I guess so. Uh, Anybody else? Nobody else? Any other? Any? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, folks. The public. Um, if anyone wishing to speak on this application, and this application only, please come forward and state your name and address. The microphone can be heard. Seeing no one, I make a motion to close the public portion. Second. Okay, motion by Mr. Mayor Capatas and seconded by Mr. Vanella to close the public portion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right, Mr. Rowan. Okay, this is an application involving 19 East 4th Avenue, block 48, lot 5, and 23 East 4th Avenue, block 48, lot 6. The um, application is proposing to take four feet from lot 6 and consolidate that with lot 5 uh, in order to eliminate a driveway uh, encroachment, which is always favored under land use law if encroachments can be uh, eliminated. The, uh, uh, one difficulty that presents it is that we're in a, an R1 zone that requires a 60 foot um, minimum lot. Mr. Marlins is currently 62. He will, after the, uh, the uh, ground is given over to lot five, he's gonna have a 58 foot lot, uh, which is underside, but which he has requested a, a bulk variance to allow uh, the, the front yard of 58 feet. Um, I think the board should consider the application favorably in that it does eliminate encroachment and is really, it appears that the character of the neighborhood, taking four feet from one, from 62 to 58, is the minimus in nature and doesn't really affect the intent of our, uh, of our zoning board in an R1 zone. So you may want to give this a favorable, uh, you know, a favorable board. Great, thank you. Uh, so I have a motion on the floor to. Motion. Okay. Um, motion by Mr. Dickinson. One second. Second by Mr. Ranieri. May we have roll call, please? Uh, Chairwoman Stinghouse. Yes. Mr. Dickinson. Yes. Mr. Lucian. Yes. Mr. Pachowski. Yes. Mr. Falkerly. Yes. Mr. Abstaining. Uh, Mr. Vanella. Yes. Mayor Capadas. Yes. Uh, Mr. Ranieri. Yes. And Mr. Liberty. And uh, who am I? I am Mr. Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone. Yes. Okay. Thank you, uh, Congratulations. Okay. Good luck with it. Good luck. The only thing we have to remember is there is a there is a uh, to update our tax maps. There is a uh, part of the fee structure is there. so that our map our map will match your property. So your legal description matches all that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Is that correct, Mr. Knight? There is a yes. We adjust our exercise of the law. Okay, we say we have no old business. Uh, new business, Mr. Mr. Bach is not going to be here this evening, but Mayor, do you have anything you wanted to discuss? When I first got on council, we never were updated on the tax matters. So one of the first ordinances that I know on council we passed was a, uh, what was it called? It was a geographic information system thing. We, we made sure that once, yes, I, we made sure that every year we update our maps to reflect any changes made by the planning board. So anytime we move a line or change a line, it's supposed to be updated. 
So it's, it originates in the, uh, from this planning board to update so that the uh, uh, engineer, the federal engineer, updates the maps. I think it's a $75 charge to move the line. And that pays. Is it two charges because it's two separate properties here? No, it's only <laughs> one line. My goodness. It's only yeah, one line. It's only yeah. one line. Yeah. Yeah. Right a couple years ago, she gets cat. Well, you know what's interesting about cat is the question about it. She does bring up an interesting question yeah, because, we, it, because we have almost two applications because the one gentleman became right. a non conforming lot right. by going from 60 to 58. Well, the other gentleman got rid of the encroachers for him. So it's almost like, that's why I was wondering, it's almost like two different applications at the same time. I mean, they both signed the application. They both signed the application. We did, buy, we did the application. bifurcate the application. It's only if we have a one line over. The four guys have to pay a lot more than one line. Good thing that neither one of them has to move the line once. Yeah, you only can move the one. I know the engineers like the charge for me. Push the button. So, all right, Mayor, did you have anything you wanted to go over as far as the development? I know Mr. Box not going to make it this evening. Well, Mayor. the only thing I, I hope uh, everyone had a chance to read the uh, master plan. Well, we did just, I just uh, asked Joyce to, she got them to uh, Mr. White Everybody. and to Mr. Liberty and to Mr. Dickens. They have not had an opportunity to examine them yet. I need to. So everyone, if they could then take a look at that. Uh, what I did is I highlighted things. I put some tabs where I think things that we all can talk about. I think this board, when we see applications coming in, we should be looking at what those are and maybe we can change our ordinance in a way that either you know gets with the times that things are constantly coming in or, or uh, identify other issues that should be uh, put in the master plan review. As for the, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping next month we have a good meeting where uh, we talk about both the master plan review and the redevelopment uh, evaluation. Um, other than that, the only thing I'd like to announce, if anyone doesn't know, I told a few people that um, the old uh, Best Work Industry for the Blind, the property on Clemens Ridge Road across from the Vault, the old Howard Lumber, uh, was sold and settlement did occur last week. Uh, the company that, that bought it is All Risk. If anybody knows who's that, who that is, that's a company out of Somerdale. Uh, they have approximately 65 employees that will be housed out of that location. Um, they do uh, you know, damage cleanups for properties, commercial residential cleanups. So uh, it's a positive for us that the building was sold, it wasn't in very good shape, so hopefully uh, it'll be brought up to current codes and, and, and uh, uh, used better. Uh, it will not be coming in front of the board because it's permitted use and there's no change to the footprint. So it won't be coming in front of us, unless they intend that they want to do something Sorry, different or something. Yeah, they might, you know, but at this point, I don't know of anything that's happening with that. Um, other than that, I don't know if there's any other progress. Well, Mr. Knight, did you want to comment on, um, we, uh, talk about that. Yeah. we did some, uh, we did the agreements with, uh, with Dean over at the vault. Do you want to comment on that in case any of the board members happen to see it in passing? Just that it was, uh, it was not required. It went for Mr. Bedford for review and also the construction official, Chris Mecca, where it gives them the option of not requiring a site plan for the uh, small enclosure it's not it's not going to be for seating it's just a small enclosure that he wants to like i guess keep some for, for parcels and some parcels and stories and things in initially it was put in for a canopy and then he was going to uh after uh, that's reviewing the re 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 situation he to yeah. close it. so if you ride by and you're doing it it has so it's an open roof there's no roof that was no it was originally just going to put a canopy in now it has a roof well it was going to be, it was going to be Extend it to be in the canopy and then put a side for it. And that's what it's getting? Or right. right. Or yes. That's, that's what the uh, is. is and we looked at it, Mr. Mr. Knight, uh, stand over to Mr. Pettit's office for review. So in case anybody sees it going up, um, it, it has been authorized and it, they're not coming in front of us for that, okay? I'm sorry, Borough Hall. Well, yeah, the only thing Mr. Ranieri wanted to mention everyone is uh, we did uh, award a contractor to continue the uh, ADA compliance project that we're working on at Barrow Hall. So what you're gonna be seeing out there is uh, we were given some grant money, so we're putting an elevator in. What the elevator and a hallway uh, will do is it'll allow people from this elevation to go to the front elevation, or where the front of the building is, which is actually about 60 inches down if you 
realize it does go down, they'll be able to go from this elevation inside a hallway, down a set of steps, to the front office, instead of having to go outside. Or, if they cannot use the stairs, they get on an elevator, they'll take them down the 60 inches. But simultaneously, it'll take everyone up to the second floor, which we haven't been able to so utilize. Yeah, so because up, upstairs, we haven't been able to utilize that area, which is our emergency management is up there. Currently, there is that storage for the court, the police, and the clerk's office is upstairs. And also, we do have a, uh, a meeting room upstairs that we might start using more pro appropriately, and then some additional storage and some more room up there. So hopefully, all this will get done. Uh, we're going to resolve the second means of egress upstairs. We're going to have a fire escape on the one side. Uh, so we'll have two means of egress upstairs, which is one of the reasons we couldn't utilize the property. But hopefully in the next, uh, what they say, two weeks? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're doing is we're doing the show, right? The show and the elevator. Everything's getting it. It's 100% done. Even the upstairs, there's, there's some... Uh, you know what the real time is? Spring. Spring? And they won't say that. They Choice is very... <laughs> He's very skeptical about uh, construction. You know what they tell you. My money's on Jewish. You can have two months. Yeah, we won't have a problem. Public comes to the paper. Okay, so we went out for bid on the, the DOT gave us $200,000. Uh, so the borough has advertised for Broadway and Elm to be repaved and improved. Um, as you can see, most of Washington is, on, is getting done. There was a few change orders. Just to let you know, uh, and I think this board's we should be pushing for sidewalks and improvements to pedestrian right away. Yeah, so the borough's position was when we were fixing the road, uh, we were removing routes that were making sidewalk stuff go up and pushing the, the uh, curb in. So uh, we made a change order to replace all the sidewalk on one side of the street um, on Washington, closer to St. Teresa. Uh, that's about 200 feet of sidewalk that's being replaced because when we took the trees out, the roots had just destroyed the uh, so I think that even this board, our attitude should be, we need to put sidewalk where it is. As you can see on Clemensburg Road, we have some sidewalks that didn't exist forever, and now fixing broken ones. But there's still an obligation of the homeowner to maintain the sidewalks in front of the property. It's only when we're doing road projects that we're gonna, we're gonna do this, or where sidewalks are not existing. So when there's a project, right now we do have a shared service with Belmark, as I mentioned this before, where we intend to do $25,000 worth of sidewalks where there are no sidewalks. Now we're focusing around schools first. So Triton is our first location down in Bingham is where we're looking first. Um, where there's no sidewalks, we're gonna try and fix those areas. So if anybody knows, Davis doesn't have any sidewalks on part of it. Uh, part of third doesn't have uh, sidewalks. You know, you know, my bolts down on Hirsch, but this is sidewalks. So with that shared service, we're gonna try to fix those. Safe routes to schools, basically. The problem is we've never gotten any money from safe routes to schools, so we're gonna use our own money to, to fix these. Well, I think we should continue on with um, our uh, practice of when anyone comes before us for, you know, a, a site plan change or something, or an addition or something, if there's not the existing sidewalks there, um, we tend to try to make that a condition of approval. I think we should continue on that path of conditioning any approval that we give to anybody in town where there are no sidewalks or they're in disrepair that we require them to either put them in or repair them up to, up to standard. And that's as long as it's conforming to that neighborhood. Like I don't think if, if uh, a mayor comes out and says, hey, I want to do this to my lot, and now he's got to put it in. Yeah. I don't agree with that. Uh, well, you, you're right. A road like Sunnybrook, right. where I live, does not have sign. Right. Uh, you're right. That would not be a, a justified use. Yeah, there's, 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 but we're talking about, yeah. uh, just to let everybody know, I don't know if anybody knows this, you know, Deluxe Bakery, we allow them to waive or not to put sidewalks in. Right. But uh, I made an agreement with Deluxe that the borough will be paying for the extension of the um, curbing in front of his property because the state, the county wouldn't do it. So the county, the municipality, and, and Deluxe has come to an agreement where we're going to share some of the cost by putting the curb in. And his agreement with the county and with us is he'll be putting the sidewalks in, which was not imposed on him at the time of his approval. Really? But because he has to put driveways in, County is forcing the driveways. How do you put a driveway without a curb? How do you do all this? So we have an agreement where the municipality will share some of the cost. Um, and and, and the county will too. County's not taking on any cost. None. None. The only thing they wow. did is they 
they directed us. But yeah, they're giving you approval at your cost. Yes, and directed what I should do. Now, Mr. Penn and I were probably on the same page in that particular meeting, but these are things that we probably should have imposed on the applicant. We understood, and I didn't disagree with the board, I voted for it, that the board allowed them because of what all the renovations they were doing, and to be business friendly, we allowed them to push, not have to do this. Yeah, so, but in this particular case, but let's realize though, that all the taxpayers of the town are helping to pay to fix this, this problem. Mm -hmm. so we're all helping to do this. But it is a good compromise. There are towns that have a sidewalk problem. Yes. The ordinance is, is created. And if you have a situation where an applicant comes in, is on the black horse pipe, and it doesn't make sense to put the sidewalk in because there's nowhere to connect it to, they can contribute to the fund, and then you can accumulate enough money, and then you actually connect two points. And that was deemed legal? Because I remember Washington Township oh. doing all that. Yeah, they, they were allowed to continue to do that. If there, if there wasn't any sidewalks there, right? They were required to do it, but in lieu of doing it, they put money yeah, in the fund. Yeah, they would contribute. Usually it's cheaper for them than just hand you a check. Because yeah, it makes sense. sense. I, I, I reverse that. Yeah. But you come up with a square foot number, you know, for the sidewalk, and if they don't want to put it in, well, we're not in the same situation. I remember this happening in Washington Township. You were down in Washington Township. The Renaissance Gate. The Dunkin' Donuts. The Dunkin' Donuts, Donuts. Donuts. yes. There was no reason to put the sidewalks in. I think in our community, there's very few streets that are not conducive for sidewalks. The streets that I'm talking about are around the high school. I mean, and you can see walking paths. Where right. Kids are walking. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. And you can see similar ones on some of the other parts of mm -hmm. our community. Um, missing curves and stuff like that. So similar we have drainage issues. issues. That similar to it is that the uh, Dunkin' Donuts across the street from me, they've got that grass spot between your cars uh, and the parking lot. And the kids have to go on where the cars are driving on the parking lot. Yes. So, so every day you have to have a policeman go down there and say, go, get off, yeah. scatter, get out. So that's why it's incumbent on this board, whenever those applicants come in, that we do follow our own ordinance. And it's in our ordinance. It's only a waiver when we grant waivers for the sidewalks. But if you don't have the, the fund, and you want to consider the waiver, you can still collect money. That's what that's, that's what I'm That's a good idea. You know, you know, you can you can evaluate it on a case by case basis whether it makes sense to put the sidewalk in for you know one application. I understand that the only people that this would really impact would be Sunset Evergreen and Sunnybrook Road, and a few areas, maybe Lakeview. There's a few areas. Where you, you and I are talking about these funds, typically what we're talking about are mostly commercial districts. And all of our I'm commercial districts. I'm just thinking about commercial districts. I, I'm yeah, he's always talking about, if you're talking about only commercial districts, but most of our commercial districts have sidewalks. The only ones that didn't was on that one side. And we were able, once again, Barrow put up $50,000 to put sidewalks in all along Clemens Ridge Road. The county would not pay for those sidewalks. So if everyone knows on the, on the coming uh, southbound, all the sidewalks and that retaining wall was all paid off for by the barrow. The county stopped at the curb, so we did that. Uh, Barrington put in almost two hundred thousand dollars to put sidewalks, if everyone knows, along their side, uh, going there. So if you're talking about commercial, I understand it, but there's almost no one on commercial in our few Evesham, Clemens Bridge, Blackhorse Pike that I would allow not to put sidewalks. In. You know, I just have a personal problem when somebody says because I do a lot of private, like, you know. Put a sidewalk from here to here, and there's, and there's nowhere to connect it to. Right? It's like, so it doesn't make sidewalk. sense. Right. I would rather, you know, the applicant give money to the I agree with the you. borough, and then they do a project that makes sense. That's all I'm saying. But you've been in front of other towns where other engineers and, and solicitors have said, we got to start somewhere. And they'll sit there and actually, this sidewalk to nowhere. You, we've done it. You know, the sidewalk at the Dunkin' Donuts in Washington Township. You know, my you client know. Whispered, whispered to me, Put the sidewalk in it cheaper. We were asking for a waiver to give money to the town. They said no. Put hedges out and put the sidewalk in. They go, there's a cemetery there. So yes. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, we're out. a little different than those other towns in that aspect. We're pretty much built out. Well, Ninth well, Avenue is an example of like what John's talking about. Ninth Avenue is saying if someone wanted to build a building on Ninth Avenue, would we require them to put the sidewalks in? Or would we like but once again, we're talking about uh, some of the projects him and I have been on. Fries Mill Road. If anybody knows Fries Mill Road. If anybody knows Washington Township, there's long stretches, 
where the money is at today. But uh, Dave, it would have to be an ordinance to receive that money. Yeah. yeah. So the council would have to be as a master plan. It's something to talk about. I don't disagree. I understand what you're saying. There's not a lot of you know places in Runby where that actually may occur. You know where there's no sidewalk. What's the name of that fund, John? That's complicated, John. You got the fee fund you're still working on. I don't disagree. I mean, the only thing I would say is that this board needs to look at each application on its own merits. Sure. We always do. We always do. But I think sidewalks are something that are important. Because the barrel, I would say, since I've been on council, we've spent almost $200,000, $250,000 on sidewalks. Well, the, kid, the kids at the RY walk in the street how many years? From the, from, the, from the senior field to the pony field. Can we finally put that side? The, the, kid, the kids had the kids. Now, these are kids that are pony kids are seven and eight years old. They wanted to go down to the concession stand when it was soccer season. They had to walk in the street. And that was a, a, a little league and a soccer recreation center. They had to walk in the street for this is the book. ever. Since what? When, when were they put in? 2000. But that was borough property. We weren't even following our own rules. Right, that's what so we right. thought we were starting. Yeah. So we finally got those done. I'll talk too much. Okay. At this point in the meeting, I'd like to open up the meeting to the public for good and welfare. Anyone wishing to speak on any matter whatsoever, please come up, state your name and address, and be heard. Seeing that no one's come, take the microphone. I make a motion to close. Okay, motion by Mr. Pachowski, seconded by Mrs. Gushin to close the public portion. All in favor? Aye. All right, is there a motion to adjourn? Mr. Offerly, seconded by Mr. Ranieri. All in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned at uh, 743. Thank you very much.